Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Andrea from Rogers here with a um, spiritual wellness check-in prophetic word that God gave me kind of a double uh, today again. Um, and it's the enemy of your calling is the enjoyment of your comfort, says God. The enemy of your calling is the enjoyment of your comfort. Let me say a quick prayer and then we get into this word. Spirit of the living God, please be with us in this message that those with ears hear and receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church and Heavenly Father. Give me the, the right words to articulate your thoughts to your children, to explain what you want, share it with them, Heavenly Father, and let them not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word as well, God. This is my prayer. Be my strength and my redeemer in this moment. And let there be no more interference, no more interruptions with technology, but let it just flow and be beautiful. This is my prayer in Yeshua Mashiach's name. Amen. All right. So I had to pray for myself, y'all, because would you believe it or not? Um, so I had recorded a message for y'all before, a powerful message. And um, right after I finished recording it and I was about to upload it um, on here, on YouTube, it just, it, the file like suddenly got corrupted. And, and then I couldn't, this is this is how bad this is how important this message is and how much the enemy doesn't want it to get out. Because the file got corrupted and then all of a sudden you couldn't hear anything. And it was like first it, it started with the sound, not being able to hear the sound. And then the entire video just stopped playing. Like it just wouldn't play at all. So at first it was playing with no sound. And then when I went to like try to fix the sound, then the video just wouldn't even play at all. Like it wouldn't do anything. Couldn't open a file, nothing. So make sure y'all receive this word. That's why I had to pray that God will cover this word so that you get it. Um, because I am like persistent in God to be obedient, to deliver this word to you once again. And so I pray that you won't just be hearers of this word, but be doers of the word as well, because it is a crucial word to give you not only um, instructions for right now, clarity for some of you that need it out there that's been praying to God for clarity, but then also um, a warning of what is to come and and how you must prepare and what and why God is delivering this word now to get you to prepare now to help you understand that what He is calling you to and what He is calling you to do and 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 how He even wants to use you, which is part of the calling to whether it be protect your family or shield your family or or to be there um for others that are going to be attached to you that are to come that you don't even know of it requires your obedience now and so you got to get out of your comfort zone or, or whatever is making you comfortable comfortable relationships or friendships or whatever family shits business ships whatever it is god is saying you got to get rid of the comfort now because that is going to be the enemy of where he is calling you to and so he's been speaking a lot about shifting because things are shifting. He is shifting things. He is blowing his judgment through the land. And, and with that, it's going to come a lot of more shaking and stirring that we see in the earth. And I promise you from what God showed me in a vision that it is not going to look like um, what we have seen before. Many of us have never lived through what is going to come and how bad it's going to get. And so we got to prepare our hearts and our minds now in order to move forward and, and do the will of the Lord that he's telling us to do because he is trying to get us ready for what is to come so that we will be able to, to preserve and persevere through how bad things are going to get. It's going to get bad, ladies and gentlemen. I, think, I know you think you may have seen the worst of things with COVID. You have no idea how bad it's going to get, but I'm going to share some of it with you today. And so just hold tight through this message as we get through it. Um, because this is not so, this is not also just a message of prophetic warning, um, but this is also a message of encouragement and hope and uh, and a check in with all of you out there because there are some of you who have been being obedient to God and you need to to receive um, a, maybe a refreshing of His promises. So I'm going to be sharing some of those with you from His Word as well as. Uh, instructions and, and warnings that we're going to get from his word as well, not just what he spoke to me. And so let me start in his word first. So go with me to Genesis chapter 18. If, if you have your Bibles, if you don't, just listen. 
Um, because what we see in this in this story of, you know, it's, I, go with me to Genesis 19, I'm sorry. But I'm going to paraphrase what happened in Genesis 18. So in Genesis 18, we see um, angels of the Lord and, and, and God encounter Abraham. And they're having a conversation with Abraham about um, what they're about to do in Sodom and Gomorrah. They see the wickedness that's happening in Sodom and Gomorrah, which was a, a, a city, a town, like Sin City, if you will. And they see, God sees the wickedness in this in this place, in this region. Abraham sees it from where him and his family are stationed at, meaning his wife and uh, his servants and stuff. And then um, the angels of the Lord are seeing as well as they're waiting for their instructions on, on what God wants them to do. And so God is letting the angels know that I want you to go in the land and um, bring forth my judgment. And so Abraham asked the Lord the question, uh, uh, says, you know, God, well, wait a minute. What if you find a certain amount of righteous people in the land? Will you still destroy the land? And so God says, well, no, I won't destroy the land if I find this amount of righteous people that Abraham says. He goes down a list starting at the number 50 and goes down to uh, 10. Um, so he says five times to God. It, you know, if I was the number of grace that we know in Hebrew. So he says five times to God and, and also five is um, is the number for window. And so he, it's a window opportunity, if you will, that that and we're in the year of 5785 or about to go into the, the Gregorian calendar year of 2025. And so Abraham is saying, again, warning, look at how God is working. Abraham was asking him five times, like, hey, what if you find 50 righteous people? What if you, and then he goes over down to, uh, to 10. What if you find this man of righteous people, will you still destroy the land? And God says, no, I won't destroy it if I find that many people who are willing to be righteous. That means live according to God's will and they have not become corrupted by the systems and the lifestyles of culture in the world. And so this is Abraham asking God, but also in a way praying and interceding. This is why prayer is so important. Praying and interceding on behalf because he knows as well that his nephew Lot is in the land. And so he's saying, well, God, are you about to bring judgment? Wait a minute. What about these people? What about my family? What about Lot? Like, will you protect them? And so it's because of Abraham's prayers that we see in Genesis 19, which I'm about to read to you, that God honors the prayer by he went through the land, but the, the angels went through the land. They didn't find anybody righteous but Lot and his family. And so Lot and his family were the only ones that were preserved. And, and it meant his family of his direct descendants, not old cousins and them, aunties and them, uncle and them. No, it was just the direct descendant, his, his wife, his daughters, and his daughter's sons. That was it. And so starting at, um, Excuse me, Genesis 19, starting at the uh, starting at the um, I'm looking for my scripture here. 15th verse. At dawn the next morning, the angels became insistent. Hurry, they said to Lot, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out right now or you will be swept away in the destruction of this city. When Lot still hesitated, the angel seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city, for the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains, you will be swept away. And so pausing right here, we see that the angels are trying to honor Abraham's prayer for his family, for his kinfolk of his nephew to be preserved. However, Lot was being stubborn. That was his hesitancy, not willing to trust God, willing to stay in his comfort zone, looking back at his home and, yeah, but it's comfortable here and I like this home and I like these people and, and you know, why we got to leave? And, and then even if I would have read a few scriptures up, even his uh, sons-in-law or to be sons-in-law, they didn't want to leave. They, they just took it as a joke. And so, Lot's kind of like, what well, is God really going to do? Because he didn't see the destruction yet. And this is the thing with prophetic word. It is delivered before God sends the destruction or before God sends the, the blessing or the warning. Because not a prophetic word is destruction. Some prophetic words are promises that God's going to send in your life. And so it you may not see. This is why faith is. You're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So that's the definition of faith. 
it is it is of what is hoped for, even though you cannot see it. And so when God is delivering a prophetic word like he's doing right now through me, it is of something to come. So it is not happening at this very second that you receive this word or depending on when you receive it, maybe it has already happened. But if you're receiving this word on the day that I released it, it is not happening this very second, but it is to come. And this is why it's important, ladies and gentlemen, that we get our lives right with God and Jesus Christ today because God is saying, I need you to get, I need you to submit and surrender your heart and your mind to me because I am breathing my judgment in the land and I'm trying to prepare your heart for my love. And as I prepare your heart for my love, I'm preparing your heart for my protection and my provision as my children, as my sheep that is in the, that I want to bring into my sheepfold because there is going to be more great testing to come upon this land. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And I know you think that you saw the worst with COVID. As I said before, you have not seen the worst that is to come. And I'm going to share some of that with you in a moment. And so God is saying today, get it right today. Choose this day whom you will serve. Let it be him. Because if it's not him, when the great, great, great hour of testing comes, that and part of what I'm going to share with you comes, it's going to be too late to turn to him and say, oh, well, well, God saved me now. You've had your warning to get it right today. You had your warning to be sold out for him today. So heed the instructions today. And because God, it, we are words that God spoke in the earth and there are promises over our life. God says, I'm sending you the warning today because my word cannot return to me void. I promise your ancestors, people who pray for you even, it, it may not be ancestors, it could be a friend or something that's praying for you to, to get it right with God and to seek his salvation. And he says, I, I, my word cannot return to me void, but you can allow my word to not manifest by being disobedient and being stubborn and wanting to stay in your comfort zone and wanting to stay around your comfortable environment or with the people who make you comfortable and feel comfortable when God is telling you to shift from those people. And I've been teaching a lot about that lately because God has been just stirring it in my spirit and heart to, to speak it to the people. And, and he's been saying it to me in my own life as well. That in this season, it's an isolation period. It's a pulling away to get instructions from him, to get clarity from him, and to be moved to where he's taking me next. And everybody can't go. This is why with, with Lot, the angels were saying, well, listen, you have to leave the, the sons-in-law behind. But regardless, with or without them, I talked that message yesterday. So if you missed it, we'll take a listen to it. With or without you, I'm coming out of here. So with or without them, like we have a promise or instructions rather that the angels are saying from God that we got to get you up out of here. So come on. But he also tells them, don't look behind or you will be destroyed. And Lot's wife looks behind and she turns to a pillar of salt. And that's somebody who is, is God trying to move you forward, but you keep looking behind. You're trying to want to go behind. What is left behind was meant to be left behind. It is not meant to go with you to your next level. If it was, God would have had it move with you. And so you have to be willing to let go of things and people in this season because God is trying to preserve you. I taught that message as well. God is trying to preserve you and to move you forward and to prepare you for what is to come. But it's going to take obedience in the season. And so God said this to me. Uh, well, let me give you let me give you a, a vision first before I tell you this other prophetic word that God gave me. So a while back, God gave me this vision. And he's and today he's allowing me to release it. And in the vision, he showed me. Um, I was in like it, I thought it was a war zone. And I thought it was I was in some little not. Let me rephrase it. I thought I was in another country in this war zone because I had never seen a war zone before. And I never seen that in, in my land of America. Excuse me. And God never really showed, like revealed to me exactly where this was. But he showed me that. Um, he showed me it was like I was crossing these train tracks. As I was crossing these train tracks, I walked into this war zone where there were barbed wires and there were soldiers with armed um, armed guns, and uh, and they were protecting a building that 
was storing the supplies that the land needed to survive what was to come. And what God was showing me was something that we see in the book of Genesis and Joseph's story. Um, and I've heard another prophet mention this as well. So this was just confirmation for some of you that probably have heard this from other prophets that we are going to experience seven years of prosperity and seven years of famine. And so God was showing me the seven years of famine part and how bad it's going to be. And what I saw was people fighting and clawing tooth and nail. I mean, didn't care that they were getting bloodied up by the barbed wires because they were starving, trying to get to this building that was housing the, that was like a storehouse that was housing or warehouse that was housing all the supplies that people would need, you know, food and, and water and paper towels and, and, um, even, even a little bit of clothing, but mainly it was like the, the things that we need in terms to, to stay alive, food, water, um, and then, you know, some toiletries and stuff. And people were, were, were trying to get and trying to overtake this place because it got so bad that people were starving to death. And so the soldiers were then shooting their guns because they, they had to think about the fact that this has to protect the entire nation. This storehouse was enough food and enough um, produce and products for the entire nation. So hear ye, hear me by the spirit. We will encounter seven years. Uh, God is giving you a window right now to get it right because he's showing you what is to come. Seven years of prosperity followed immediately by seven years of famine. And this is why he's trying to get you to get your heart and your mind right in alignment with him, to give your lives to him now so that he can give you the instructions you will need in order to sustain and receive his his uh, promise of protection and provision in that great time, uh, that greater time of testing that is to come. That's why I said you thought COVID was bad. And some of you may have went through um, scraping by with, with living off of savings because maybe the job shut down or whatnot. But God is saying it's going to get even worse than that. And I wish I could paint a picture for you of how bad I saw of this, this, this war zone. But I, when I tell you the country didn't look like the way it does now. It looked much worse. The insurrection went, went nothing to what it looks like, what is going to come. And people were that desperate. And we see that in the book of Genesis with Joseph, where um, God positioned Joseph to be in a place to have the wisdom on how to store up and ration out the food and provisions so that when the seven years of famine came, the people will be preserved, including his family. Because this is why you have to understand the resources that you have today is not just for you. It's for your people that are, that are attached to you. And so it could be for your family, your friends, your loved ones, but it is for people. And so that's why God takes you through a season of isolation so that he can download instructions with you. He can prune out and purify your faith and things that are not of him. And so that he can give you the strategy you're going to need to survive the storm that's going to come. People are going to turn to you. That's why you're getting this message. You didn't come across this message by happenstance or because somebody sent it to you. You came across this message and you're watching it because God has an instruction for you. And you're going to need to isolate. I've been talking about that a lot lately. You're going to need to isolate, pull back from the people around you to receive that download and to, and to allow God to, to call you up higher. That's higher in him as well as higher to new levels that he has to take you to in order to get you what you need in that time period. Because it'll be seven years of prosperity followed by seven years of famine, just as it was in Joseph's day. And this is another reason why you cannot be so tied up with the comforts of today and of this world. You can't be looking towards Friday night, just got paid, you might be trying to find a party. That's, that's the old, old school song from the 80s. Not in this season, not in this time. You cannot be trying to focus on trying to, to be comfortable and, 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 and trying to, to, de to develop a normal for you because there's no more nor normal. This is a new world order that we have stepped into since COVID. And there's so much more to come and it's going to get worse. So you got to be good stewards of what God gives you now. You got to start storing up 
now, not your, not the finances. Because when that time comes, the money is not going to matter as it didn't in Joseph's time. There was a time where they were able to come with money and buy food and, and, and things they needed. And you got to go read the book for yourself. But then it came a time where the money ran out. They didn't have money. And then they were selling the things that they had um, in exchange. Like, here, I'll give you, at that time it was cattle. So I'll give you this cow um, for some grain or something. You know, um, just they were they were giving exchange of, of, of goods. And then eventually that dried up. And so then they sold themselves into slavery because that's all they had left was themselves. I'll work for you for free for food. It's going to get that bad, I promise you. Because God showed me a vision, and I have heard other prophetic voices that God showed the same vision to. It's going to get that bad in the nations. And so we got to be willing to pull back now and get that download from God now and, and spend time in prayer and fasting even and getting into our Bibles now so that God can prepare us for what is to come so that we don't succumb to the the weight of the famine because it's going to get that bad and so we got to look at why we're doing the things that we're doing today you know why do you work as hard as you do why why are you trying to get the money why are you trying to get the next opportunity why are you trying to get the business there why are you trying to get the promotion why are you trying to be married why are you trying to be in a relationship why are you trying to be connected to those those friends or those family like what are you doing this this, this stuff for this is the time now where vanity needs to be thrown out the window, baby. Because you got to be looking at things from a broader perspective the way God is. You got to have tunnel vision in this season. Because there is more that is to come. And you can't get wrapped up in the pleasures and the comforts of this, this land, of this world that we live in today. Because it's going to be here today and going tomorrow. You got to learn how to buy your treasures from God. And how do you do that? Get into his word because there is tons of instruction in God's word of how you get the provision and the promises from God, the treasures from God, because there's a working that he's going to be doing in this time for everything that's a season and a time. Uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter three, it says it this way. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. That's the isolation. A time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. There is more to come. There's more wars to come. And, and part of that war is going to be a war on hunger. And it's not going to just hit the poor as you as many of you think. And you bank on your money. You think, well, I got enough money. We're going to be all right. It's going to come to the wealthy too. It's going to come to the wicked too. And I'm going to give you scripture for that as well. It's going to come to all. And only those who are covered and called by God's name will be preserved and provided for during that time. And those who are not, those who did not give themselves to God, those who did not make Jesus Christ their Lord and their Savior, then you will succumb in that time of famine. And God is, is giving you the instructions now, giving you the warning now, heed these warnings now, because he doesn't want anybody to perish during that time. He wants everybody to repent. That means turn away from your wickedness, turn away from your way of doing it and seek his way of doing it. That means divorcing the comfort for his calling to you and on your life. And the greatest enemy against the calling of God that he's trying to get to you and the calling that he has for your life that is going to protect you and preserve you with the more of the great testing is going to come in this time and in this season, which is not just a year. It's a season. It's a time period. It's, it's years. That's why I said if you count seven years of, of uh, prosperity, seven years of family, that's 14 years altogether. You're going to need God in this season. So you got to get it right with God, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to um, 
I want to give you this word that God said to me. And I was sitting in prayer with God yesterday. And um, I was questioning him on why was he. Um, I know I'm in a period of transition. He's already told me that. I was questioning why I couldn't do something I wanted to do. And I was just, and it was not something big, just, you know, something, I'll say routine. So I'll, since the word is about comfort today, I'll say routine. It was something part of my routine that I got comfortable doing. And so it was like, God, why are you switching up my routine now? God, why can't I do it? Like God. And so I was questioning him and he took me um, to Job chapter 40 and 40, 41 and 42. So Job 40 through 42. And we learn, or rather, let me not say we learn this. We go back a little bit. I've been talking a lot about my story and about the correlation to Job's story because God told me in 2013 that I was going to go through a Job season. And then he told me to read up on the Bible in the book of Job so that I will understand what that meant. Because that's what he was offering me up to be tested by the enemy and go through what Job went through. And uh, I was not trying to do that. Uh-uh. No, I, I try to reject that word. Maybe I maybe I didn't hear you correctly, God. Uh-uh. But I went through it, which is why I'm here to give you guys instruction and to give you encouragement because I went through my own great time of testing where every where there was nothing left but my faith. That was it. No no money, no no car, no 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 house, no no um family, friends, relationship, nothing health even. I was so sick, nothing. But my faith was the only thing I had left. And this is why I'm telling you to get get your faith right now. Choose Jesus Christ now. Because that's the firm foundation. That's the the riches that you're going to be that you're going to need of heaven's economy of what is to come. It is not the things of this world because they're going to come and go. It's going to be the things of heaven. And so as I was saying this to God like God, why are you? So God said, um, especially since I'm transitioning, he already told me I'm transitioning. He took me to the book of Job chapter 40 and said, start reading from there. And I was like, I already know what you're going to say there, God. I don't want to read that. <laughs> but God was like, no, read it. And so I, you know, I said, I was obedient and I read it. And in that text, God is asking Job, he said, brace yourself as a man because you questioning me and my judgment and and me and, and my strategy of why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it, my plans. He says, well, tell me this. Where were you when I created the whole world? Where where were you when when I did this and when I did that, and when I breathed this? And, 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 and he went down a whole list where Job couldn't answer the questions. And, and God even says, if you can answer these questions, then I'll come to you for advice on how I should judge the whole world and how I should do things in your life. But, but you know, brace yourself as a man or as a woman, as he was saying to me, answer these questions. And I couldn't. And Job literally says, you know, uh, I spoke of things I didn't need to speak of. So I'm going to put my, my hand over my mouth. And I did the same thing because it was like, you're speaking of things you don't know nothing about because you don't have the vantage point that God has. You're seeing things by sight and you're not seeing things from a heavenly perspective. And so we got to be willing to see things the way Jesus sees things, the way God sees things versus the way we see things on this earth. Excuse me, again, we walk by faith and not by sight. And so as I was um, listening to God, reading the scripture, whatever. God then said to me, um, again, because I went through the Job season, so he's letting me know. What is to come, the blessings that, just like Job, received a reward from God because of his faith and because of the great testing that he went through. God was saying this to me and he told me to share this with you because there's somebody out there that needs to hear this and receive this, that God sees what you're going through. He saw what he put you through. What we allowed to happen to you of testing. Um, but this is your your word of encouragement that, but but there's a, a warning in this encouragement as well. And so let me just say what the Lord says. He said to me, if you say it's my worship to you, Lord, then why am I question then why am I questioning when the Lord asks to step away from it for a while? The question then becomes who are you doing it for? Yourself, the applause of man, or the approval of me? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. I told you that I, the Lord, have spoken. 
So if I am telling you this, listen, heed my instructions and simply just rest. Sila, I, the Lord, have spoken. You've been faithful over a few things. Now let me bring you the many multitude of opportunities that I have in store for you. Sila, I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken to you, Andrea. You must learn to trust in me. And so put your name in there of whoever that, that word is for as well. Because what God was saying to me was what part of my routine of things that I was doing. So, for example, like going to the gym at the particular hour I was going to the gym. God was saying, I need you to shift from going at that time. And I need you to go to a, go at a different time. And even um, shifting on certain days uh, to not show up on those days or whatever. And I didn't understand. So I'm just questioning God like, God, why am I not going to the gym this day? Or why can I not go at the time that I normally go? And and so he was explaining to me through Job, like brace yourself as a man. Like how you questioning me of, of my knowledge and my wisdom of why I'm telling you to shift. You just got to trust. And so he was saying like, oh, for example, of me, of uh, because I asked God a bunch of things. But for example, of the gym, he was saying to me, if if you say it's to worship me in your workout, just putting that example in there, then why are you questioning when I'm telling you to step away for a while? And I was like, wow. And then he said, the question becomes, who are you doing it for? Is it for yourself, for vanity is what he was saying to me? Is it for the applause of man, for people to say, hey, I see how well you're working out. Or I see how much you weight you've lost. Oh, you look so good. Or is it for me? Like, is it really for my worship? And this is why we have to stop for a moment because people work or, or you work even in ministry and you're and you're doing these assignments and you're saying it's for God's glory. But when God's telling you to pull back or to sit down or to take a break or to say no and, and you're questioning God. Think, calling it the enemy, calling it the devil when it's not. And, and God is saying, it's me speaking to you. And if you're doing it for me, then you should be willing to give it up for me. And I heard, I heard somebody say it recently this way. How you can tell if something is an idol in your life is if, is if God is telling you to put it down and you're unwilling to do it. That means that you have put that on the altar of your heart. You have Basically put that on the throne and not God. And so when God is saying to you to shift, to pause, to be still, to stop, to rest, to say no, to operate in balance, or to give it up altogether, it's because it's a test to, of faith to see who is truly on the altar of your heart. Who are you truly doing it for? Is it for yourself? In your own glory? Is it because you want the approval and applause of man? Or you feel like you got something to prove to them? Because of, maybe they said something bad about you, so you want to prove something to them? Or is it for God's glory? Because if it's for God's glory, then we tell you to sacrifice it. You have to have the faith that Abraham had that, that says, if God can is calling me to sacrifice my, my son, who he promised me, then he has the power to resurrect it. Or he has the power and authority to give me more. Because Abraham was promised that he was going to have many descendants. Which Joseph, speaking of Joseph earlier, is part of those descendants. And so he had to have the belief and understanding that if God told me to sacrifice it, then God must have a plan. Now, I want to talk about two different sacrifices that God has showed me when he was speaking to me this message uh, yesterday in my prayer time. It's the, the sacrifice of Abraham and then the sacrifice of um, Hannah in the Bible. And if you don't know the story of Hannah, then please go read it on your own. First Samuel uh, chapter one and two, we see two different sacrifices. So in the book of Genesis, God asks Abraham to sacrifice the promised son for him. It was to see, do you value the promise over me, meaning God? Do you value what I have promised you over your relationship with me? And so Abraham had to take his son up to a mountain, I think it's Mount Sinai, to sacrifice him. But at the same time that Abraham was being obedient to take Isaac up the mountain, which was going to be the descendants, was going to come from Isaac. The promise is going to come from Isaac. He had to be obedient to sacrifice Isaac. Now, thankfully, as he's about to sacrifice Isaac, God says, stop. Now I know you will not withhold anything I ask of you. 
because you are willing to give up this promise that I gave you, the very thing that you have been praying for for years, fasting for for years, you were willing to even sacrifice it. There's a ram in the bush. <laughs> Many of you have heard that before. It, it says, if you're new to the faith, welcome. It's a new teaching for you. But God, at the same time that Abraham was walking up one of, side of the mountain with his son, God had a ram walking up the other side of the mountain. And the ram got caught right at the place where Abraham was about to sacrifice his, his son. And so God says that you are willing to sacrifice that for me. I will give you more. Don't spare the man, spare the boy's life, which was Isaac, spare your son's life, and instead sacrifice the, the ram that's in the bush. That's one sacrifice where God asks you to give up something, but it's a test of faith to see will you be obedient. And if you'll be obedient, he'll let you keep it. The second one is a sacrifice of Hannah. Hannah had to sacrifice her promised son that she prayed for that she fasted for because God made her womb barren but she said a prayer to God that if you open up my womb I will not withhold my son from you I will give him back to you and what we see excuse me is Hannah gives up her son and doesn't get him back she gets more children but she had to um it says when he was weaned off of her, you know, from breastfeeding. So that could be some people breastfeed to the age of five. I know some of you are like, what? I've seen it. Some people will breastfeed to the age of five years old. So that means between the age of one to five, she had to take her son to the temple and leave him with the rabbi. These are Jewish people. She had to leave her son with the rabbi and then go back home. Now, a few times um, the, the story says that she would go back up to at least check on him. And bring him a new coat or something like that. But for the most part, she had to leave her son there. And that was it. She That means that she was not going to be a part of raising him anymore. And having those day-to-day -day experiences with him anymore. And so how does that correlate to, to us now? Because there are times where God will ask you to sacrifice something that you won't get back. But because you were obedient to sacrifice it. To get, get, get rid of the comfort of it. God says, I will bless you with more. And so she was able to have more children, but she was barren for a long time. But finally, when she was able to give up the very thing that she wanted, which was a child, God said, now I can bless you with more children because I, same thing he said to Abraham in a sense, because I know you are now with, not withhold anything from me. God is a jealous God. He wants to be on the throne of your heart. And so when he's telling you to sacrifice something, it's for a reason. We have to be willing to sacrifice what is comfortable, what is familiar for where he is calling or what he is calling us to do. And like I said, two different instances. One instance, <clears throat> you may get it back. The other instance, you may not get it back, but he'll give you more. And that's what he was showing me and speaking to me in the prophetic word I just gave you um, about like you went through this Job season. I know I put you through it. but. In Job chapter 42, we see that Job gets back a double portion blessing. It was as if he didn't even go through it because he got back so much more. That's what God was saying to me. Like, I have so much more I'm going to give you. He's saying to you out there as well. There's so much more I'm going to give you, but it is going to require a sacrifice. And so you may not know what God is doing or why God is telling you to give it up or why God's telling you to walk away from somebody or some people, even, even if they're family. But you got to trust where you can't trace God and know that he has mapped things out for your for your good and for his glory. We got to be obedient because, like I said, there's a great greater time of testing that is to come where you will see seven years of famine in the nations, in the world. And people will be starving and will be hungry. And when people are hungry and starving, they claw, they come out clawing, they come out fighting. And as he showed me, there will be so much warfare where even the soldiers will be shooting down people because they're trying, because everybody's scared and panicked, trying to preserve what little rations are left in the land to last the entire seven years. So we will have seven years, as we see in the book of Genesis and Joseph's uh, story around Genesis 37 to Genesis 50, for those who want to read it. Yeah, there's seven years of prosperity. Where there's so much abundance that's coming. But then there will be seven years of famine where the land will be dry. Basically like a drought. 
dry and you will need to trust as i've been teaching a lot about first Kings 19 17 through 19 in elijah's story you have to trust that god will send provision where he sends it so it will come through people and this is why people who are prideful out there hear you hear me if you are so prideful because you feel like you're so grown and you got and you taking care of yourself and this is your money and and you gotta ask somebody for nothing baby god gonna knock that pride right down because he's gonna show you none of y'all own nothing Everything belongs to God. Because you know something that I learned, and I'm saying this to God. I learned that when people die, because I've been a, a, around a lot of different people who, who have uh, passed away. When people die, they leave a lot of stuff behind. It was treasures to them at one point. Now it's trash to others. It's collecting dust. I mean, people will sift through it, what they want, what they find value in. But for the most part, it's going to go in the trash. It was treasure at one point for the person who was living. But once they did and gone, you can't take it with you. So now it's just left behind for people to do with it what they want to do with it. So what does that mean? Nothing that you have is yours. That's why Job said in, in Job chapter 1, he said, naked I came into this world, naked I shall leave. It's understanding that when I was born into this world, I didn't have nothing but the breath in my body. And when I leave this earth, I will have nothing left with me but the last breath in my body. So everything that you have, your house, your car, your money in the bank account or whatever your currency is, wherever you are in the world, uh, in your bank account, your, your, your clothes, your shoes, your whatever. You don't own none of that. God does. And he can do with it what he see fit. He can come and send a storm, little, a little storm, tornado, tsunami, to a hurricane to come and wipe out everything that you were banking on that you thought was yours and that you had idolized and put above him. We have seen it time and time again. And we will see more of it. Because God says, I'm preparing hearts for his love and for his worship and his glory. And so in this season, in this time, you got to be willing to get it right with the Father and heed the instruction that. Your comfort is going to be your enemy against your calling. And you got to be willing to shift that and say, no matter what, I'm going to put God back on the altar of my heart, on the throne where he is and belongs. And I'm not going to idolize these things anymore. I saw a prophetic word before on the power of 444 and what God was showing me about how the enemy has been really blinding a lot of you luring you with these things dangling them in front of your head in front of your face and you calling it a blessing from god and it really wasn't it was a test from the enemy or rather a test from god temptation from the enemy to see will you go with or will you go after the very thing that you desire so much and you took the bait and so god is saying you were you, it was because it was comfortable for you you took the bait of what seemed comfortable. Oh, there's more money over here. Oh, there's this opportunity over here. Or oh, there's this relationship over here. And you, and, or there's this ex coming back to be in your life. And so it was comfortable. Regardless of all the bad, it was comfortable. And so you don't want to go through a single season for God to bring you your godly woman or your godly man. And so God is saying today, divorce your comfort. Because there is going to be so much more to come there's so much more testing to come and if you don't get it right today you will succumb to those fiery trials i want to read the scripture to you psalms 37 starting at the fourth verse And it reads, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. This is not your own thoughts and goals and dreams and plans and, and agenda that you have for your life. It is God's desire that he wants to put in your heart. That means his will that he will put in your heart and he will give you that. He will give you what to desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. So this is another, it's a promise in this particular scripture of Psalm 37, but it's also a warning again, because you're going to see seven years of prosperity, meaning so much wealth and whatever, uh, and, and, a, and a boom 
in in the economies, but you're also going to see well some some crashing as well, and you know, but but then you're going to see um a great time of testing. Seven years of famine, and so even during that time, it's going to seem like wow, the wicked are prospering with the righteous. How are they getting these opportunities? How are they getting this? How are they getting that? And God is saying, do not be consumed with what they are getting because their wealth is going to dwindle. The famine is going to come to the, the just and the unjust alike. The famine is going to come to the poor and the rich alike. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and the needy to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. That's the promise. When you get it right with God and you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior and you're in alignment with the calling on that God has on your life, that doesn't just mean a calling in terms of a job opportunity or or um or a business. It's the calling of him of being his child and operating in alignment with him. Uh, before I continue on the scripture, uh God gave me another vision where he showed me um in the transition season, and and he was moving me from one situation to the next, moving one from from one place to the next. And so first we're in a car, and then we drive to a train station. And I'm like, why are we getting on the train when we just in the car? Like, where is the train going? The car can't go. But nevertheless, I'm obedient to get out of the car with him and follow toward the train. And so we get to the train, and he tells me, he says, um, there is there is a yellow line of a box that looks like a square, but it's not. It's a rectangle. You got to stay in, the, in those parameters. That's where your protection is. You got to stay in those param parameters. So I'm like, uh, I see the yellow box. And so I'm trying to make sure I don't go over the line. And I'm not paying attention because I'm trying to look down at my feet, but I'm not looking ahead of me. And I literally am about to fall off. Because it was darkness in front of me. I'm literally about to fall off of the platform. And thankfully the angel of the Lord comes and grabs me. And pulls me back. And I'm like woof. Wow. And as he did that a train flows by, passes by me so fast. Like I would have almost got hit by the train. And I said to the Lord. Oh I was trying not to go out of the lines. Like I was trying to stay within the lines of the parameters. And so he like st stood me in the, in the middle. And just like stay right here. And so what does that mean? That means that God gives his children parameters to operate in. Even right now, God is giving you parameters to operate in. And you got to heed the instructions and the warnings of God to get it right right now. It's not going to be parameters of your comfort. It's going to be uncomfortable. But if you trust God in the discomfort, you can, tr you can trace where he's trying to lead you in the parameters of his protection. So that you do not succumb to the pitfalls like in the in the vision or like in this particular scripture and in that other vision, the famine. He's going to protect his children in the great time of testing. If you're like, well, is that Bible? Yes, it is. Revelation 7 through 13. It's a promise to those he loves that I will keep you. I will do, uh, I will keep you from the great time of testing that's going to come upon this whole world to test those who belong to this world. And so you got to trust and believe and, and operate in a place of faith that even though you don't see what's happening right now, heed the warning of what is to come and get your faith right and your instructions from God right now. Bank on heaven's economy right now and other things of this world because they are going to be fleeting and you're going to need God to get you through what's to come. 
finishing up in the scripture, but the wicked will perish, though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field. They will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Here's the big kicker that I love, and many of us have heard this in the church if you've grown up in the church. But you may not know all this of the scripture that I just read to you. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. When you choose to live according to God's will, God's plan, God's um, economy, God's parameters, God's calling on your life and calling in the alignment that he wants you to live of righteousness, you can trust and believe that he will keep you during what ever comes your way and whatever comes in the land because it was either sent by him or allowed by him but it's all him at the end of the day and so we got to understand that you will not be forsaken nor your children begging for bread and if you don't have any children then you are the child <laughs> you're not going to be begging for bread when you choose to live righteously according to how God wants you to live and so back to the prophetic word he gave me I declare it again over you. If you say whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, whatever's going on in your life right now, if you say that it's for God's glory or for God's worship, your job, all that, if you say that it's really for the Lord, then then why are you questioning when the Lord asks you to step away from it for a while? Like I said before, God is requiring sacrifice in this time, but it's a sacrifice of obedience. Can you give up what you think is good for God and God's goals and not your own? And if you can't, then that's a great um, that's a great uh, barometer to show that it's become an idol in your life and you've been worshiping it. And so many people don't realize that they've been worshiping money. That's why I taught that prophetic word of 444. Go listen to it, the power of 444. Because so many people don't realize they're worshiping the God of money. And that's why God says, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, he says, how, where you should store your treasures. But he says, test me with the tithe and offering. When you choose to test God with your money, when you show that it is not an idol, and you are willing to give it up no matter what he tells you or how much he tells you to give up, then he says, I can bless you with more. I can provide you with more. Because you were willing to sacrifice what what could have potential to become an idol in your life. You got to be willing to give up whatever God tells you to give up. And it may not be money for some people. Uh, you know, it could be a, a relationship, a person. It could be family. It could be uh, the job opportunity. It could be the house. It could be the car, whatever it is. God's asked you to sacrifice in this season. And you know what it is for you. But God says, can you give up your comfort? Your comfortableness, your comfort level, your, your 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 comfortable people, places, things. Can you give that up for what he's calling you for? Because if not, then that's going to be the enemy to your calling. And therefore, it's going to be detrimental to the provisions and the protection that he wants to give you because you won't have it. Because you have idolized that and made that your God and not him. And so, continuing on in the message, the question then becomes, who are you doing it for? Yourself? The applause of man, the approval of me, well done, thy good and faithful servant. When you are willing to be obedient to God and give up whatever he told you to give up, he, this is what you hear from him. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. As he said to me, I told you that. I, Lord, have spoken. So if I'm telling you this, listen, heed my instructions, and simply just rest. I, the Lord, have spoken. See, lie, I, the Lord, have spoken. You've been faithful over a few things. Now, let me bring you the many multitude of opportunities that I have in store for you. See, lot, I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken to you, Andre. You must learn to trust in me. Again, put your name right there. Because God is saying, if you have been obedient, then just be still in this season and in this time and trust that he will preserve you, protect you, and bring you more opportunities so that you will have stored up what you and, and those who are connected to you are going to need. So that's another reason why the isolation season is, is important. He may tell you to isolate for a moment, but it's not going to be forever. And it's a reason because he's trying to get something to you so that he can get it through you. 
that's going to be beneficial and helpful for the people that is to come. But you got to be willing to pull back in the season and give up the comfort for what God is calling you to do. And so let me pray and then uh, get up out of here. Spirit of living God, I thank you for this word. I pray that it was encouragement and clarity and, and confirmation for even some out there of what is to come and what you're about to do. Heavenly Father, give them what they need. Help them to get through what is to come and help them to even get through the barriers or roadblocks or challenges that they're facing today to be obedient to your calling, Heavenly Father. I pray that those with ears will hear this word and not just be hearers of the word, not just be a hoarder of the word, to just keep it to themselves, but they will be doers of the word and, and share the word so that others will receive the warning as well and, and will get it right with you, God, so that they that they are not at the end of judgment of your wrath, but that they are protected and covered by your shield of love. So this is my prayer, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, this I pray in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. All right, guys, so I got to go. Take care. Love you much. Um, play this back if you need to so that you can get this into your heart and in your spirit. All right, take care. Love you guys. Bye now.